Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. We hope that God has blessed you this awesome Thursday, and we know that God is uh, giving North Central Wisconsin, he's giving us the rain and, you know, last little minute bits of snow. And so we just pray that you are finding joy, you're finding peace, strength, and comfort uh, during this time. And so we just want to thank you for tuning in to this devotion. This is kind of a free text week, so we've been uh, hopping all over the place in scripture. So what we are going to be in today, we are going to be in the book of First Thessalonians, and we are going to be in chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can go ahead and turn to First Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, this text talks a lot about when Jesus Christ comes back. So we know that the first time he came to this world, he came in humility. He was born of the Virgin Mary, his mom. And we know that he, when he came, not everybody knew who he was to the world. He was just another baby born. He was just a, a baby that was born in Bethlehem. But scripture tells us that when Jesus comes back, right, for his second coming, everybody's going to know who this is. Everybody's going to know it's Jesus. And scripture says that regardless of belief status, every knee will bow and acknowledge Jesus as Lord. So First Thessalonians talks a lot about it. And especially uh, this text talks a lot about Jesus's resurrection in the light of those who have already died. And so this text is a comforting text, especially maybe you've lost somebody or maybe your heart is hurting for somebody who has passed away or somebody who's died and you're just really missing them and you want to see them again and you look forward to the day when you see them again. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, has good words for us this day. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we are going to start at verse 13. Here we go. But we do not want you to be informed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Right off the bat, what I love about this First Thessalonians letter, the overarching theme of First Thessalonians, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a hype letter. It's a really big letter of encouragement. This church, they're doing a lot of things really, really well. They're a small church, but Paul says, hey, I've heard about you. I've seen your faith. I've heard reports about uh, the church, the people, the congregation, and just want to say, keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep following Jesus. Keep following the Holy Spirit's work. And I love how he starts off this text in verses 13 and 14. He sets he sets Christian grief apart. That's what he does. That you So the second half of verse 13, that you may not grieve as others who do not have hope or who have no hope. We grieve differently than the rest of the world. We still grieve. There's still things in our lives or maybe there's people in our lives who we miss greatly every single day. And we just cannot wait to see them again. But in the meantime, our hearts are heavy. Our hearts are sad uh, because, because we miss them. And Paul says that grief is okay. We just don't grieve the way the rest of the world does. We grieve with a sure and certain hope. Uh, verse 15. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of a, the trumpet of God, as the dead in Christ will rise first. So a lot of people or it's very important for us to understand what Paul is not talking about here is a rapture, right? We've maybe you've heard that word before in certain Christian circles or uh, you've heard that word come up uh, with different TV shows and stuff. The rapture is not biblical. The rapture implies that God is going to take a certain number of believers to be with him in paradise and then some people are just left behind. God never says that. Scripture doesn't say that. Uh, definitely encourage you to walk through the book of Revelation and read that for yourselves. Re we don't read Revelation uh, literally. We read it metaphorically, so to speak, because we know that God uses a lot of imagery in that book. 
But what Paul is talking about here is he's talking about the fact that the people who have died in Christ, those who believe, those who love God and have fall, have died, their death is something like that of sleep. It's something like that, that they have fallen asleep and that we know that sleep is temporary. What happens when anybody goes to sleep? They wake up. And he says it's like that for those who have died in the Lord, for those who have died believing in Jesus. This is just like a very big, long sleep for them. Because when Jesus comes back, what is he going to do? He's going to open their eyes and they will wake up and they will rise with Christ. And we get to see those who have fallen asleep again. He's saying that will happen first. So let's keep on going through our text. Verse 17. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. I love verse 16 because it's a promise that Jesus himself is coming back. For the Lord himself, Jesus, will descend from heaven with a cry of command. So... What's he going to do? The entire world, all of creation is going to know that this is Jesus, that he is coming back. And how? Because there's going to be something with the voice of an archangel, with the voice of authority, of command, with the sound of the trumpet of God, where the entire world, all of creation is going to be aware. They're going to hear its sound. They're going to hear things happening. And what are we also going to see? The dead will rise, the dead in Christ will rise first. And this text brings me personally a lot of comfort because, kind of as I said a little bit ago, this text brings me a lot of comfort, especially for those who in my life have died. And maybe you have that person or you have people in your life who have died. People who you wish more than anything you want to see them again. That... Maybe they just weigh heavy on your heart and you're like, man, I really miss so-and-so. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a spouse that you were married to for a number of years. Maybe it's a, a high school friend. Whoever it is in your life that you're missing, God promises a resurrection. God promises that you are going to see this person again, that the dead will rise, that when the dead rise, we know that Jesus Christ is back. We know that he's back, and we also know his plan. Right? As Paul says in verse 17, we who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we will always be with the Lord. When Jesus comes back, it's not for to do earthly ministry round two. We know that when Jesus comes back, he's going to remake everything brand new, a new heaven, a new earth. That he's going to raise the dead. He's going to sh- promise that sure and certain resurrection to the dead first. He's going to give us our own resurrection where we get perfect bodies, where we are sinless, we are blameless, we are without fault, spot, or blemish. That is the promised resurrection that Jesus has for all of us, for those who believe in him. And that's why it's so important for us to 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 bring the message of the gospel to any and everybody we possibly meet that this is the greatest news that anybody could ever hope to have, and that those who believe in Jesus, this is what they get. For those of you in your life who have died, this is what is on the way. And we don't grieve as the rest of the world who says, well, okay, now so-and-so, they're just, they're dead and gone, and that's the end of it. Jesus says, no, that's not the end of it. And praise God it's not, because if that were the end of it, we wouldn't be here. If that were the end of it, we wouldn't be Christian. Christianity wouldn't be what it is. And it's a movement that has transcended time and has left its forever footprint on history. And we get to be a part of those footprints. We get to be a part of the the greatest movement in the history of time. And that is to reach out and engage other people and spread the word of Jesus to any and everybody we possibly can. So that way we can all have the sure and certain life, the sure and certain resurrection And it's a resurrection, not just for us, but it's a resurrection for those who we miss, who we love, and because of what Jesus has done, who we will see again. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And Lord, we know your plan for us and we know your plan for those in our lives who we miss. For our parents, for our children, for our friends, for, for anybody in our life who we've lost. Lord, we know your plan is to bring life. Your plan is to bring resurrection. Lord, you defeated death. You humiliated death. And Lord, you tell us that death is just like a very long sleep. And we know that when you come back, anybody who, anybody who has fallen asleep in you is going to wake up and they're going to wake up perfect and blameless. And Lord, we look forward to that day. But until that day comes, we pray that you continue to be active in our hearts and in our words and our actions. And that by the power of the spirit, you would enable us to reach out, build believers, to connect them to you. We pray all this in your most holy and powerful name. And all God's people said, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us. Hit that share button so that we can reach out and engage other people with the life-saving, life-changing news of our Savior Jesus. Uh, we just pray God's blessings upon you today. We've got worship tonight, so we definitely invite you to join us at 6.30 tonight for Thursday worship. Uh, other than that, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our next devotion. So you all take care and have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye-bye.